And that's why it's important to try to build a rapport and learn your students as much as possible. And not only, not only it helps them in the classroom, but it also helps you so that you can accommodate their needs on there. So try to learn as much of, of your students as possible that can help you in your classroom. Yeah, and that what you said about the sub for uh, for me, like the the notes help the sub because the sub's not going to read your IEP plans, Correct. even though technically they're required to do yeah. the same thing you're doing. They're so overwhelmed coming in there, so Especially having a quick the little thing, yeah. it's like, hey, don't put these two kids together on your roster, or hey, this girl has to be close to instruction because she has a hearing disability. Those kind of things can really help your sub yeah. out for real. Hey, what's up guys? This is Ben Landers, uh, founder of PeSpecialist.com, and you're watching the Phys Ed Q&A show. This is a place where we're gonna just have some conversations around common questions related to physical education and try to help make your day a little bit more awesome. I hope you enjoy it, and just want to remind you, show note links will be down in the description of the video, and if you would rather listen to the video's audio in audio form, we do have a podcast, uh, which you can check out for all you podcasters. Um, just search for the Phys Ed Q&A show. Let's get into the show, and I hope you really enjoy it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ben and Marcus. We're so happy to be back with you on the Phys and Ed Q&A show. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, we're happy that you're here. Thanks for being here, Marcus. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. It's good to be back. Good Season to be two. Back. Let's good do to it. hang out. We and Marcus hadn't seen each other like all summer, so this is our excuse to hang out to get it chatted up with some Phys Ed uh, content. And before we get started, congrats on the new addition to the fam, man. Thank you, thank you. Just uh, me and my wife just had our first child. It'd be uh, 11 weeks at the time of this recording. It's been great hanging out with him all summer. He's a blast. And he's just a mini me. It's been great, you know, getting to know him, getting to learn, and do all kinds of things. But uh, I'm excited to get the school year started and start off season two and get back in the lab with Ben. This is always uh, it's always great to be back with Ben. Good stuff, man. Rocking that dad life. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Before we get started, we do want to read the iTunes review of a week. the week. This iTunes review is coming from Abe330. And it says, rock solid advice that will not only make your skills as a teacher improve, but will increase the fun and your students have 10, you and your students have 10 out of 10 would recommend listening. Nice work, guys. Abe330, thank you for that nice five-star review. Appreciate it. Uh, we'd love for you guys to go review on iTunes if you're enjoying the show and getting some value out of it uh, because that does help people find the show. So this is episode nine, new school year, and we thought it would be fun to uh, do a back-to-school episode. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, what it's like the first week of school when, uh, at least in our district, teachers go back before students do, and we have like a week of work days um, where we have to go to like a thousand meetings mm -hmm. and uh, do different random things. So we'll talk about that, kind of what our uh, prep things that we do are, and then also our first week lesson plan. Um, just discuss you know what we do in that first week PE and kind of go over some of those uh, main points of our first week lesson. You want to get started, man? Let's get started. Uh, our district does a great job of giving us a little bit of time before the students come, and I'm sure that happens across uh, the nation a lot. So we like to uh, take advantage of that time and getting ourselves prepped and ready to do that. Before you begin that, one thing, advice that I would uh, encourage you to do is to try to jump in as many, as many summer PD uh, professional development opportunities as you can. That's a great way to prep yourself and get yourself excited for the new year. Um, there's lots and lots of different conferences and events that you can go to, and that's a great way for you to fellowship with other PE teachers and get around and get some new ideas. So the first thing I would tell you to do before the school year starts is to try to take advantage of the summer as much as you can. Um, if you have a little 11-week-old uh, at home, it's tough for you to do that kind of stuff. But if you have the time to do that, that's a great way to get yourself started on there. Can you uh, give me some ideas about some, some summer PDs that you like to go For to? sure, bro. For <laughs> sure. Um, as Marcus was saying that, I was thinking of a wise, retired PE teacher, uh, Mac, that once said, uh, where does a filler go to get filled? Where does a teacher go to get taught? And where does a, oh, there's one more thing, and I'm messing it up. I'm sorry, oh. Max, I never see this. But the, the idea is, 
I know that I quoted this on my blog somewhere. I'm going to have yeah. to go look it up, put it in the show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. The whole idea is as teachers, we're getting so burnt out. And, um, you know, you need to cut it off for a little while in the summer and relax, but you also need to fill yourself up Correct. so that you can, uh, you know, help your kids and teach your kids. And one of the best places to do that is, like Marcus said, getting some PD at a conference. If you're tied down and for some reason you can't do that, there's so many online resources. That's what our site is all about. And there's tons of people on social media always posting great content. So you got to um, get in there and learn a little bit. And it really does help to get around some passionate phys ed teachers. Correct. Um, I'm going to two conferences this year. Me and you are hitting up the uh, Peak Conference, Peak which conference. is a local South Carolina conference that mm-hmm. we're doing in August. It's just a little one-day conference Um focused on members of the South Carolina AFERD uh, organization. And um, I'm also going to go to uh, this weekend, actually, getting ready right now for presenting at the National Peak Institute in Nashville, nice. which is one of my favorite conferences I've oh, ever yeah. been to. It's put on by Artie Kamiya. He always brings in a ton of amazing, passionate PE people um, and just love meeting all the people that I've connected with online there. It's, it's held at... Um, right outside Asheville at the uh, University of North Carolina, Asheville. So it's really, really nice facilities. It's always a lot of fun. There's always a ton of quality people. So if you can ever make it, if you're in the southeastern region, highly recommend checking it out. Correct. Yeah. Um, Also, uh, we personally have, during that first week of school, uh, our district gives us specifically uh, half a day to designate towards PE-specific PD. So like during a work day, um, I actually get to plan it. We have like a person that leads the elementary, leads the middle and leads the high school. So like I get feedback from all the elementary PE teachers and then try to plan relevant half day PD. So if your district isn't doing that, that'd be um, a great thing to try to yeah. add on because we, it's a good time for us to catch back up because we don't see each other in the summer. And we're really lucky as a district to be able to meet once a month to collaborate and talk about different things. So if you don't have that in your district, that would be a great advocacy piece that you can try to add on to your district, especially that first week. And we take a we take a half a day and we and we get to know the new PE teachers in the district and we get to share ideas and we have special guests that come in. And I know I enjoy it every single time, especially seeing the other PE teachers in the district and how they're doing. So if you don't have that, that'd be something that you could try to add on, especially that first week of school. For sure. Uh, it's like one of the few times that all the PE teachers get to get together and sync up on things. That's awesome. Um, so it's it's so nice to have PD that's relevant to you instead of having to, as many of us I'm sure have had, and we still do have to sit on PD that might not be as relevant. Correct. Maybe it's focused on things that are more relevant to classroom teachers. Correct. So having that phys ed specific PD is something I would recommend pushing for if you don't already have that in your district. Um, what else? Do you do Coach Nellums during your first week back at work when the kids aren't back yet? One thing that I really enjoy doing, and I've been able to do that, uh, is if, if, if that's your personality, especially that first day back, if we are going to be the leaders in our classrooms to try to get students to work well with each other, then you need to try to do that with the faculty that you have at your school. So I try to be um, very welcoming when that that first day back, especially when the teacher is in the room. Um, That's a great way to be an advocate for your program. So the teachers know that not only do you care about the students, but you also care about the other uh, members of the faculty. And and you can help them along as they're trying to get their classroom set up and and get acquainted, especially new teachers and first-year teachers and um, even veteran teachers. So that's what I try to do, especially that first day, is just, you know, put myself out there and talk and connect and, And uh, it helps out a lot, and especially setting that expectation with your classroom teachers early that you are willing to work with them, and you're not just off in the gym by yourself doing your own thing, that you're willing to help them um, with their classroom management, with their activities, and it helps out along, especially if you're doing lessons and, and field day at the end of the year. If you have that rapport with your classroom teachers, it can help your program be very successful. I feel like you were just preaching to me, man. <laughs> I can, like, get in that first day rush with all the stuff I need to do and just everybody on my team is going out to lunch. I'm like, man, if I just work through lunch, yeah. I can get so much done. Oh, no, yeah. But yeah, that, that's so important. It really does take a village to raise some students, man. You got to you gotta put a little time into the camaraderie 
and um, be a part of the change. Be a part of the change, for sure. Oh, our logo just went out. Oh. Don't mind that. Don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys like the fancy uh, logo in the background. It's pretty a good awesome. bit of time setting that nice. up today. It's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, after we do that, after we talk to the other teachers in there, then we try to get back to the gym and try to set up and get ourselves set up for a lot of different things. I know at our school we have, we're lucky enough to have a laptop and we have an iPad and we have an, um, an uh, iPod that we use for music. So I try to get back there and get everything set up for the first week of school just to make sure there's any glitches or anything that's not working as you know, sometimes you have construction over the summer and things change. So it'd be good to test uh, all the equipment that you have. And um, that's one of the first things I do. I like to try to do that early because if something is happening, um, the computer tech people are slammed that first week as well. So you want to try to get your issues resolved as early as you can. And don't try to wait till the last minute, especially if you are like us and really enjoy using technology and bringing that into our classrooms. So you want to try to jump on that early, make sure all the glitches are out, make sure everything's good to go before that first week comes. True that. Make sure yeah. the Wi-Fi is working. Make sure you can connect on Wi-Fi with all your devices. Make sure your Bluetooth is working if you're streaming music Bluetooth, via Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, we both have TVs that we use in our gym, so make sure that, that wireless stuff is working with maybe an Apple TV or if you use a cord hookup. Basically, just doing a full test run of that first week lesson, making sure your slideshows, your videos, yes. all that stuff is working. Um, so important, and definitely, like Marcus said, you got to get in early if you want to be there for <laughs> that first day of school. Tech, yeah. The first week is probably technology team's like least favorite week of the whole year because everybody is trying to work out all these problems at the same get time. The emails started and all that. Yeah. yeah, so get it in early. Get there early. Yeah, for sure. Um, so another thing that we do during our first week is uh, we are required to go to IEP meetings, which is, if you're not familiar with that, it's like the special ed plans for each student that has a special accommodation at school. Um, all the teachers that teach those students have to know what those accommodations are so that they can provide that kid with equal you know, educational opportunities. So that's for us, since we teach every kid in school, it means we have to be in a meeting basically all day long get like a big stack of papers like this big and um i don't do you guys have to go to a meeting for all that oh yeah yeah, yeah. so how long is your meetings our well, meetings uh, they try to condense them as much as possible um uh, but our meetings take a, a, a good chunk of time um i i didn't put a lot of stock into it early on as my teaching but the more years i've been teaching the more i appreciate the iep meetings because you get a first-hand look of your uh, important students in your classroom and have an advantage of what you're going to know who's coming in the gym and what they what they need and how you can accommodate them is extremely important. Um, a lot of first year, second year teachers don't really understand that, but the more you teach, the more you understand that if I know what this student is coming in with, then I can be prepared to help them be very successful in my gym. So uh, I like to make sure that I'm focused really 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 strongly on the IEP meetings because that that stuff is really important to know and it can help your PE program get off to a great start so if you know what the students are coming with and you know how to accommodate them that's going to help your PE program uh, excel extremely excel for sure man one thing that I've done in the last I think maybe four or five years is we're we're meetings for probably three hours. Uh, they do like thirty minutes for each grade level. So they'll do like the kindergarten IEPs, then they call first grade in. First grade comes in, they talk about the first grade IEPs, and all of my team, like art, music, and PE, and computer, we're all just hanging out the whole day as each team is coming in. The special education teachers are explaining about each kid. You ask any questions. Um, so I create a Google Doc and then I have like kindergarten and I have a list of each teacher and every kid that's in their class and just a summary of the IEP because I'm not joking when I say we get a stack of papers like this stack, big. Yeah. So for me, I'm basically s saving myself some work later and reading through this big stack of IEPs and summarizing them right there as the special education teachers are basically giving us a summary of it as it applies to me or the other related area teachers. So then... It usually ends up being about one page per grade level. And then I send that to the other teachers in my team. They really appreciate that, just having a quick summary of all the kids that have a special education plan. Um, because 
unless you break it down into something that's that's consumable, there's no way for you to remember all the things that Correct. you have to remember, the special Correct. special things you have to do for each kid. Correct. So writing down and summarizing quick little things that are going to apply to you, like maybe they have to be sitting close to the instruction. So it's literally just like close to instruction or, you know, things like that. So that's been really helpful for me. I even, um, we'll talk about our rosters in a little bit, but I put a little summary of each student's IEP on the roster. On the so roster, that yeah. I won't have to pull up any extra paperwork. It's literally right there for me. Any kid that has an IEP, any kid that has asthma, any kid that has any kind of medical condition, an allergy, it's on our roster where I take my information for grades and behavior and all that stuff all on one page. Yeah. Um, so that's what I do during that IEP meeting. Highly recommend it. And it does save me a ton of time later, even though it is a super long meeting. But like Marcus said, yeah. it's so important to put that work in up front. So then throughout the year, you know your you kids better. Back in it. Uh, and you can have that good relationship with your special ed teachers as well. A lot of times, um, through, I have to talk to them because that's a great way that they do it. Because they do it with us. They just meet as our related arts teacher at our school um, separately than they do with the classroom mm-hmm. teachers. So it might be something that we, that's a good idea that we might have to take to the school and uh, work on that. But that's also, that's also a time when they talk about your 504, your section 504 ones with health related, different things like that. So that's a great time to listen to that, especially in PE class and kids with, you know, allergies and uh, asthma and all that kind of stuff like that. That's an important meeting in that first week that you need to make sure that you are paying attention to and, and taking notes and, and different things like that. Uh, we'll talk about the rosters later, but when we write down the things on there, sometimes we put little cold things down. We don't put specific things that might be, uh, if you have a substitute teacher or somebody there that could be embarrassing to you know a student like that. We just try to make sure that we get the little notes and remind ourselves on there. And that's why it's important to try to build a rapport and learn your students as much as possible and not only not only it helps them in the classroom but it also helps you so that you can accommodate their needs on there so try to learn as much of, of your students as possible that can help you in your classroom yeah and that what you said about the sub for uh, for me like the the notes help the sub because the sub's not going to read your IEP plans Correct. even though technically they're required to do the same thing you're doing they're so overwhelmed coming in there so Especially having a quick little thing yeah. it's like hey, don't put these two kids together on your roster. Or, hey, this girl has to be close to instruction because she has a hearing disability. Those kind of things can really help your sub yeah, out. For real. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, there's one, one other thing I thought of when you were saying that is uh, it really helps if you're out of school for more than one year because this yeah. year when I go in at the beginning, all the kids that I had notes on in kindergarten, I'm just going to take that same Google Doc, copy those it's kids, put them in first down. grade, yeah. and then add any new kids because – their IPs might have changed a little bit, but the kid is ultimately the same with probably the same issues. Maybe they, you know, a few things have changed, so I'll make a few more notes on there. Yeah. Um, but it really helps you to read your notes from the previous year um, when you're talking about the kids that are one year older, and you're like, oh yeah, this worked really well last year, and here's a note about it. So it can help the meetings go well and get some good feedback as well. Correct. And if you have a chance and you are... Uh, really in tune to your students on there, relate some information to your administration. You see the kids in an activity-based situation, so they're going to act a little bit different than they do in the classroom. And we do a lot of team building. We do a lot of stuff like that. So if you can relay some information that you've learned from your students to help them in their classroom or at home or anything or at recess, that would be a great time to communicate with your administration on there. Um, I know they ask us a lot when they're trying to build rosters for the classroom. How did this kid do with this kid? Because we have double classes, so we have multiple classrooms in the gym at a time. So sometimes they'll ask us, um, how does this key, how does this student work well with this student? So if you can relay that information and be aware of taking those notes would be a great thing to do. That's a great thing that you can try to work on that first week. Yeah, and that's actually a good thing to have the classroom teachers in. Yeah. Just maybe think of it as yeah. a lot of times... I forget, like the first grade teachers don't know they the kids are about no to get. Clue. Yeah. So we're able to give them a little bit of insight yeah. on their students are about to get. Correct. Which is helpful. Correct. Let's talk about the about 1,000 meetings that you have to go to <laughs> during that first week of school. Man, yeah, I mean, there's the meetings list are long, um, but just like the IEP meeting, it you you see the growth and you see the purpose of them the more you teach the longer you teach 
um, especially like the health the health meeting and then all the all of the meetings that the classroom teachers um, have to deal with and the, the, the PD and the overall professional development that the district is trying to accomplish with you um, that is a great way for you to learn what the other people in your class in your school are doing and I think that's important simply because um, the more that you can see and the more that you can relate to them that's going to help you in your classroom as well so there are tons of different meetings on there and what I would try to do when I'm at those meetings is try to figure out some way that I can relate that to my classroom um, it might be a reading assessment or a writing or something like that something that you probably won't be able to do in your classroom but you can see the kind of strategy and approach that they come with and that can help you in your classroom as well but there are tons of tons and tons of meetings that first week and just telling you to Try to survive through and get through as much as you can, learn what you can um, in those meetings. Yeah, yeah. I always try to think of, and like, your perspective matters. So you go into the meeting with a bad attitude, all you can think about Correct. is all the work is piling up in your desk, then you're not going to be a positive part of that meeting, but you have to be there anyway. So you might as well do your best to try to help the meeting go in a positive way. Don't text on your phone. Don't be on your computer. <laughs> Pay attention. And like Marcus said at the beginning, it's a chance for you to develop those relationships with your administrators, with the other teachers in the room, and to try to be an attentive student as you're learning. And also think about from the perspective many times of the administrator or whoever's uh, presenting that PD. Yes. They usually don't have a choice. Usually that's required for them to present by the school district. And whether or not it's relevant or not, you know, for legal reasons, we always have to go through like sexual harassment training, mm -hmm. blood borne pathogens Engines. training, all the, yeah. you know, first aid and all that first stuff. Day, Same exact thing every yeah. year. So thinking of like fun things that you could suggest if you're going to like th maybe spend the time thinking about how could this be better and bring up some suggestions, some solutions in a positive way to your administrators to try to make it more fun. Um, like we do like quizzes sometimes and they try to like make it like a game show for mm -hmm. like the different sexual yeah. harassment things yeah. just to make it funny. <laughs> just like, make it fun. Yeah. Laugh yeah. and you're still going another over way the to training. Connect, another way to learn. So it breaks yeah. the ice a little bit. One thing that I do recommend, especially in the, in the meetings that can help you, especially if you're with a whole bunch of different classroom teachers or somebody that you have the perspective as a physical education teacher that you see all of the students. So you know all of the students one thing that you forget as a PE teacher is that if just like Ben said that kindergarten that third grade teacher has no clue about any of the students that are in second grade unless they're their own or their brother or sibling or somebody that's you know that's in the grade that they're in so if you can relay some information that can help that um, teacher as they're learning their students that's a valuable valuable tool that you have as being someone who sees all of the students in the school for sure um, and then we're also going to uh, just hit real quick. We have something called a district kickoff in our district. Your district might not have something like that. Um, but basically the whole district gets together because uh, we have a pretty large district with a ton of schools. And the superintendent talks and usually they bring in some type of guest speaker or motivational speaker. And um, I feel like I know I have sometimes had a negative uh view towards that as mm -hmm. like a waste of my three hours that yeah. morning or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then... If I go into it with gratitude and just being thankful that the district's willing to pay everybody to come out to this on one of the busiest weeks of the school year because they believe it's important enough to unify the district. It's the only time in the whole year that the district gets together oh, and you get yeah. to hear directly from our superintendent and that they get to sync everybody up on the vision for the year and what the district is trying to do and update us on you know, some of the achievements that our district has had or mm -hmm. things that are happening in different schools. I think it's really important, and I've see, I've come to see the value of it as I've taught more as, and more. As you, as you learn more what's, and more. What's your take on the, the district kickoff? I was, I mean, I was obviously in the, in the same boat that you were in, but as I've grown as a teacher, I understand now that it's important for us as a whole district to get together, to build that community, to be on the same page, and to see what we did well the previous year. A lot of times you're stuck in your little bubble at your school and you don't see what the other schools are doing. And it's, it's very humbling to see all of the great things that all the schools in our district get a chance to do. 
Um, so it's always good to see that. And it's always good to hear from the superintendent. And one of my favorite things as you teach more in the district, as people move from one place to another, that's a great way to reconnect. And you see people that you haven't seen because uh, you don't get a chance to go to their school and you don't get a chance to see them outside of school. So it's a good chance to connect with teachers and admins who moved on and who've gone different places. And uh, if your district doesn't do that, that might be something that they might want to try to incorporate. I think it's um, I think it's a great thing. A lot of times they have vendors that come in, especially if you're a new teacher or you're new to the district and you don't know any about the benefits and services that you might have in your district, a district kickoff uh, or sort of type of event like that is a great idea um, to get your teachers more comfortable in there. So uh, I enjoy the district kickoff. A lot of our teachers don't um, because we're all getting together and there's, there's a lot of things that you could be doing um, instead of hanging out, but I can see the big purpose of it, and I think it's I think it's a great thing. Yeah, got to be there. Just have a good attitude. Yeah, on any meetings before the school year starts. Yeah. Um, so another thing, I actually just posted a blog post about this, so we'll link that up in the show notes. Um, and that I always do in that first week before kids come back is getting the recess bags together. So at my school, we do a recess bag system where. I order the equipment the year before, do an inventory of like what the recess equipment is left from the previous year and order some new stuff if needed. And then each grade level gets a bag of equipment. It's their responsibility to keep up with it uh, for the entire year. If something is damaged, I have like a few extra things that I'll give if stuff gets damaged um, or like if a ball like hits the fence and gets a hole in it or something like that. Um, but otherwise, like if you lose something, then too bad, so sad. Like you just don't have a ball for the rest of the year. So. Um, it's a, very much a hands-off, take responsibility for your own stuff <laughs> approach, which I'm a very big fan of. Uh, and I, I would highly recommend if you don't have a system like that and you're uh, frustrated with your current system for managing recess stuff, um, check out the blog post linked in the, in the show notes for a detailed overview. We do a recess bag system as well. In the past, we've done a recess cart before um, where you have um, one cart for the whole school. Um, as far as them taking it up to recess, using the equipment, putting it back, leaving it for everybody else, the last group brings it in. Um, that's a whole school community on there. Our school became, became too large for us to try to do a recess cart, so we went to the recess bag system. Um, you also, when you do recess bags, you have to you know, weigh your inventory about what you need and what you don't need. And then, just like Ben said, you have to have an idea of what you are going to do as a school when students lose equipment because they are going to lose equipment at recess. It happens every year, it happens all the time. So what it, we try to do is communicate that with our administration and let them be the voice as far as what to do on there. Some years they say, too bad, so sad, you're on your own. Some other years they've given us some resources to get more equipment for the students. Um, they've also given them a chance to, um, as a PBIS, a positive behavior intervention system that they get to bring in something from home. That's a strategy that they've done on there. So having a plan for recess, because let's be honest, if you're at the elementary school, that's one of their kids' favorite times of the day is to go out and recess and play at recess. So have a plan, check out the blog posts, have a plan about what to do when students lose equipment, because it's inevitable, it's going to happen. So. Um, that would be my biggest advice for you to, to have a system in place and then what know what to do when students lose equipment. For sure. Uh, next up is I thought we'd talk about organizing, managing, and inventorying equipment because I know that's something we do at the beginning of the year because I have to put in my order before I think it's like soon, yeah. November or yeah. December or something or I, I can't use the money. Um, so we get a dollar per student at our school, which I know is a lot more than a lot of schools get. Um, we have about 600 students, so usually I have about $600 to spend, um, and usually I have a running list that I had one one year, probably four or five years ago, I took literally all the equipment out, had the kids help me count every single thing, had a list of every single ball, every single racket, knew exactly how much I needed, and uh, for since then I've just worked off of that, mm -hmm. and um, so then when I get new stuff, I add it to the list, and when I get stuff you know that goes down or gets flat or I have to replace it I'll just make a note of that and order it at the beginning of the next year and then with any extra money that's when I get my wish list stuff like got some uh, 
endo boards, mm-hmm. little balance boards last mm-hmm. year, a little extra stuff. And, uh, you know, just you have that wish list of things that you want to get. And so any extra money go towards that as well as like any grants or fundraisers that you do. Yeah, checking your equipment is, is a lot of, sometimes that people forget to do that. And then the school year starts and they go, oh, oh, man, I, I need this, I need this, I need that. That's something that you should definitely work in that first first week back when you're doing teacher work days and meetings and all that kind of stuff. To, just to make sure that you are doing that. One thing that we try to do is, uh, like Ben said, keep a running log of things that happen. And then as you are teaching and moving along, have some ideas about what you want to add on to the next year. Keeping that as in the back of your brain while you're teaching and and then while you're doing an activity and you go, oh man, I'm running low on this, I need this, I need that. Make a list, have a list set up so when you come to the end of the year or you come to a break in there or your chance to order some different things, you have an idea and you're not going, oh yeah, there was something I needed to remember to get. Have a list ready and prepare for you. That helps you out when you are um, ordering equipment and getting ready for the, the school year to start. But double check your equipment room, double check that you have everything that you need for the year um, and then jump on that ordering um, quickly as you can um, so you can have that stuff prepared for your classroom. For sure. One thing I would say with that too is um, the more organized you are in your equipment room, the easier it is for you to keep up with your inventory. So like one thing I've done, and I've been on a mission to do this for like six years, (laughs) is get rid of every cardboard box and replace it with a clear plastic container Mm -hmm. and so uh slowly i will order like six to ten containers every year and throw out some boxes i'm like almost there almost there. so i can i can walk into my equipment room see on the shelves all the plastic containers that have the items in there so it's much easier for me to see what i have and then on the front of each container i have the number of items like 24 paddles or whatever it is it's in that box um so then i can just update that little label as I uh, lose or add more equipment. Correct. Yeah, yeah so that correct. helps. Correct. Uh, after you finish your organizing, then you want to get a chance to work on your rosters. Um, rosters are important for you to try to organize as much as you can when that first week comes so that you can uh, know who, who students are coming, what classroom they're in. Um, if you're at, like, at our school, they like to um, be in the classroom. Rosters is a big thing for our classroom teachers so they like to wait until the last minute to try to hand out those rosters especially as related to our teachers you're going to be one of the last ones to get the rosters anyway so what we like to do is just enter that first week of students with a default roster that they bring to us so that way if any changes happen or anything like that we don't have a final sheet set up for them already so i go in with the default sheet that the registrar the people in the front office give us and then we just make notes on that one for the first week and then we set them up on our computers using our um our our docs for what we do throughout the year but jump on if the, the the faster you can get those rosters and you can look at the names um, I like to purchase the yearbook from the year before to get a chance to look at the students just in case you forgot from one student's on there. So um, all you have to learn is the new students that are coming in and the kindergartners. But um, jumping on those rosters and doing different things on there would be a great way for you to prep yourself for when the students come that first week. Yes. Um, I also, we get our rosters the la- like very last day before school starts as well, which it's frustrating, but it's also you, you have kids getting added to school like the, the day, day before of. school starts. <laughs> yeah, they get like they literally just show up the day before. They're like, hey, what do we need to do to like yeah. come to school yeah. tomorrow? Yeah. And so it's not anybody's fault other than just like parents don't know what to do. They come late and, you know, parents are moving in from out of town. So even that first week of school, you're having kids that are getting added. Um, and so I do the same thing. Um, I try to usually the day before that class comes, like if, if school starts on a Tuesday, On Monday, I'll look at the Tuesday rosters, and I'll try to, like, think about seating chart and, like, Mm -hmm. who, any IEPs. I always look at the IEPs ahead of time and mark those on my rosters just so I'm aware of any special cases that are about to come into my classroom so I can be prepared for it. Um, And then, the you know, the second week of school, when I'm pretty sure everything's set in stone, then I'll add it on the computer and print it off. Um, We have something called home base spots, which is like the assigned spots that we use. And so on the roster, all the IEPs are listed, any like health accommodations, asthma or anything like that. 
and um, also the home base spot number. So each kid gets a number and then that's their like spot in the gym. And if you're curious about that, we have a video explaining it and also a template for the rosters on our uh, home base spot block. So we'll link that up in the show notes as well. You can check that out. Yeah. And then bonus, if you have time. If you have time. <laughs> is you got to plan the first day. Got to. <laughs> but if it's, as a bonus, you can plan out the first few weeks if you have a little time, nine weeks maybe. Maybe. If you're really feeling good, Scoping you can it. plan out that whole year. Oof. Yeah. Oof. And if you haven't listened to uh, our our uh, recent podcast, Scope and Sequence, we talk about how we plan out our year. And uh, we'll leave that up in the show notes as well. So you can check that out. But that's usually something I try to do during that first week. If not first week, at least first few weeks, just so I can... Uh, I feel like there's always a cloud over my head until I have a plan for the year of what my year is going to look like. I don't Correct. know about you. Yeah, it's the same thing for us. I usually try to get first week, maybe the second, or maybe to the point when we get in that fitness testing. I try to get up to that just to give us a couple of weeks before we start that uh, pre-test on the fitness testing. But uh, oh, one thing that I did forget to add on that first week is to make sure that you are prepared for the back-to-school night. Because... Mm. Students are going to be coming back. They're going to be happy to see you. That's a great way to look at that yearbook from the year before. So that way when students come in, you have an idea of, and you can remember what they are. Because, I mean, you've had a couple of months off uh, and you might forget what students look like or uh, what their name is. So get yourself prepared for that back to school night. The parents love it when they walk in the gym and you go, hey, Susie. Instead of going, uh, what's your name like that? So yeah. be prepared on that. That's a Sorry, great way Marcus. to be in there. I don't see Susie in your contacts. Siri. Oh, Siri. <laughs> Siri thought I was saying Susie. <laughs> um, but be prepared to uh, on that back to school night. Some some schools do it after the school year starts, but our district does it the day before. Um, excuse me, the, a couple of days before the school starts. So that um, kids can get acclimated into the school and their classroom. So be prepared for that if that's something that you have in that first week. For sure. So that's a full summary of our first week back at work, right before the kids come back. What's the prep work? What's the stuff that we're doing beforehand? This has been quite a long episode. I'm thinking we should do two episodes. Yeah, we do two episodes. First week. First next week. episode. Next episode. We'll talk Join about us next week. time yeah. for what our first week of school looks like. Hope you guys can uh, listen to that for our first week when kids come back, first day lesson plan, all that stuff. We'll hit that next up. And I hope that was helpful. Uh, good luck. It's a super hectic week. Just try to have a good attitude. Get excited about um, seeing your students again, getting back in the routine, and um, having fun. Have fun and teach on. You got any last closing remarks? It's good to be back. Uh, check us out. We're going to tell you about what we got going on on the first week of school next time you come in. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please hit us up. Um, share, like this podcast. We can share that to as many people as you can. Get them, get the voice out. So uh, we appreciate you as an audience. For sure, we got a lot of gratitude. We know you can be doing anything with your time. So wherever you're listening, wherever you're uh, at, or you're watching on the computer, maybe um, we really appreciate you being here. Hope it was right. helpful, and if it was, we'd love for you to share it with somebody that might also find some value from it. Hope you guys have an awesome morning, day, or night. Have fun and teach on, and we'll catch you next time. We'll see you. Thanks for watching, guys. That's it for this episode of the Fizz Ed Q&A Show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like. Make sure you hit that subscribe. And don't forget to share with somebody that you think might benefit from the conversation. Just a reminder that we'll have all the uh, show notes linked below in the video description. And uh, if you would rather listen to the audio version, we do have a podcast, uh, which is an iTunes. You can search that on your favorite podcast player app. And uh, be sure to subscribe. Hope you guys have an awesome day. As always, have fun and teach on. And we'll see you next time. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching the video. I wanted to let you know this video is sponsored by the PE Specialist Membership Community, where teachers have access to great tools like unit plan samples, station signs, trainings, tutorials, and even community forums. If you think the membership might be a good fit for you, you can head over to the PEspecialist.com slash info for some more information. Hope you guys have an awesome day.